Hold on, y'all already know what it is, your boy, y'all cope with it, do The outlet to reality, the whole this podcast in Vegas and Chicago. What up? This is the place where you want to hide from your drama or maybe hide from your baby mama. <laughs> Just kidding. But anyways, fam, thank you for staying tuned. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. Cha-ching! And today we have a very, very special guest. He's one of the closest people in my life. He's my cousin that I grew up with. I uh, give it up for Daniel Perez. What's up, brother? What up, man? How are you? Good, good, man. Well, for, for those who don't know, this man right here, man, we when I used to live in Chicago back in the day, uh, we used to go out almost every weekend. Like my my schedule was booked. And it was my boy's 21st birthday. And I had to take him to my favorite club at the time which was called Rivery. You had two floors. You had a, like a bachata room and, the, and then downstairs you had hip hop and it was popping, bro. I ain't gonna lie. So we drank, we had a good time, you know, we, you know, danced and did our thing. And, you know, we had to go out hard for my boy. Check this out. We happened to bump into two beautiful Latinas, man. They were looking fly, like a couple birds, you know? And y'all yeah, not gonna believe this, but they happen to be sisters. And, you know, we, we look good for, you know, being that time we were looking fresh. And we start dancing with them, talking to them, giving them drinks. Next thing you know, within a couple hours, we start making out with them. That's the crazy part. And we felt so good. Like, we felt like, the, the, like a million bucks at that time. And I ain't gonna lie, it was one of the best nights I've ever had. I'll never forget it. And the cool yeah, man. Like, you remember that? You remember? <laughs> it was it was a rough night for me, man. But it was very fun, right? And, and and the best part when we got home the next day, my cousin Daniel's like, "Bro, you gotta take this girl out, man." I'm like, "For real?" <clears throat> I'm like, "Man, what should I say?" And my cousin helped me out how to message her, and it actually worked. I was able to take her out the next day. I've never spent over two hundred dollars for one chick. <clears throat> it was the me- most I've ever spent for. But honestly, it was a day I will never forget. And thanks to my cuz, it happened. So yeah, man, uh, you actually ended up getting very lucky that night because um, I'm not sure if you remember, but the following day, I found out that the girl I was with all night, she was actually married and had, like, two kids, man. I'm not sure if you remember that, bro, but <laughs> that was kind of, like, the dead end for me, man. I was like, can't even do it, bro. Damn. You know what I'm saying? But, hey. I had know. no idea, brother. Yeah, dude. I had to cut that shit, bro. <laughs> That's crazy. That's wild, brother. That's well, man. Well, For those who don't know, like I said, this is my cousin Daniel Perez, my cousin for life. Um, Today's topic, we're going to talk about, is it okay to date your bro's ex-girlfriend? Yes or no, and why? So, quite honestly. Yeah, tell me, brother. I'm going to have to say, from life experience, it never ends well, man. It just never ends well. And you know why I'm saying this. You know what I'm saying? But to all those guys out there who think their girls, you know, or their boy's ex-girlfriend is bad as hell, you know, man, like they say, you can look at the menu, but you can't touch my dog. You can't order, bro. Well, for y'all who don't know, I have a story to share that actually is based on true events. And to protect everyone's names that we are about to say, we're going to use fictional names to not hurt anyone's identity, okay? <laughs> we'll call her Olivia, by the way. So pretty much, guys, I dated a girl for like a couple of years, and um, she had a brother who was my brother-in-law, and he dated a beautiful girl named Olivia. Now, they were about to get married, and they just had a fucked up relationship. Sorry my language, but they just kept going back and forth. And I had a rough, uh, you could say, not a good relationship. So because I had so much anger, and at this point, you break a man down, you broke him down. At this point, I did not give a damn my actions. 
So for those who think what I did was right or wrong, you're about to see I play with fire, by the way. <laughs> so what I did was after I broke up with my ex and I found out that my brother-in-law just broke up with his fiance, I hit her up. And I start messaging her. And for those who don't know, y'all going to be shocked. But she actually stepped over my house. And he, to this day, don't know about that. <laughs> but let me just continue the story. So we got really close. I helped her get a job. She was kicked out from her ex-fiance's crib. She needed a job. I helped her do a resume. You know, I did what every good guy could do. She got the job. She was so happy. She's like, oh, my gosh, thank you, David. I, I got it. <laughs> Let me take you out. <laughs> it would be a pleasure. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we got more comfortable. She started calling me at night. And we got really close because she got a really hard breakup for a long relationship. Me too. And I think that's why we got closer. And uh, my birthday was coming up. So I said, I think it would be great if I take this girl out to the club. Now, for those who don't know, she just turned, uh, I forgot how old, I think 21, just to, to be uh, honest with y'all. She just turned 21, and she's never been to the club. So I was like, She yeah. just turned 21, or, or yeah, how old is she at the time? Yeah, she, she, she had just turned 21? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> she loves Mexican music, by the way. So I told her about Mansion, which is actually five minutes from her crib. And for those who don't know, Mansion is one of the best. For me at that time, it was the best. Like, if you like Norteño, Corrido music, like, that's the spot where you want to go and take a girl. Because they be, bonk, like, they, they be, you know, spending money and dancing and everything. So my ass don't know a lot about Mexican music. But I was like, you know what? I can impress this girl. So I picked her up. I ain't going to lie. Let me just tell you all the story real quick. When I picked up the dad, the dad was already drunk. And you know what he did? He was like, I got to take a picture of your license plate so you don't steal away. I said, okay. So he took a picture. Literally, when I took her in the car, he stepped out of the house, pulled out the phone. And, he, you know, he, he doesn't know how to use the iPhone real well. He took pictures of the front and the back of my license plate. And he wanted to see a picture of my driver license in order for me to take her out, which is so obvious, oh, by the way. So we go to my boy's house, Brian, which you, you know, Daniel. <clears throat> and we went to his crib first, pregame, and then we head to the club, my favorite spot. We get there, man, and it sucks, bro. The cover was like 50 bucks, man. I ain't going to lie for each person. I was like, damn. I guess it was a big, like, a, like almost like a concert, I think, was happening. We get there. We dance. She had one of the best dresses I've ever seen. Now, let me tell y'all. She looked white, but she's Mexican. I had, I'm a big, I'm, I'm a big boobs guy. I ain't gonna lie. I'm not really crazy about big ass. If she got big ass, that means she could take a big shit. If she <laughs> take a bigger shit, that means we got a problem. Man, I be doing it. I be doing it over. That's my territory right there. But me, I love milk. You know what I'm saying? But anyways, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we do that, all that stuff, right? Couple weeks go by. I told Olivia, I said, girl, whatever happens between us stays between us. Because if you start telling one of the family members, they're all going to think that we left our significant other just to be with each other. So it just looks bad. And she's like, I promise I won't tell nobody. She broke my promise the next day, by the way, y'all. <laughs> she told her ex-fiance, who's my brother-in-law, Dave is trying to smash, like, or Dave is trying to take me out, which I already did. Next, you know, I this is the only way I found out, by the way. I'm gonna let y'all know. My cousin Daniel at the time, I'm gonna be real with y'all. We didn't talk for a couple of minutes, we were we mad for there, a couple uh, of times. Okay? Yeah, we, we were mad for each other for something that was a long time ago, and he pulled me to the side, and, and at this time I thought I'll snap what's gonna happen. Pull me aside. I remember it was in the hallway because we lived together. He said, bro, I know we don't talk right now, but I got to tell you something. I said, what's up? Uh, you remember Olivia? I'm like, yeah. Well, you remember her, man? I said, yeah. Well, he's looking for you. I said, what you mean? So, short story okay, to why no. people would be a bit confused. So, 
me and Olivia's boyfriend at the time were very good friends. Um, you know, uh, like David said, me and him went out constantly. But when me and David had had that, like, three, four-month period where we weren't speaking, me and this individual had gotten very close. So, you know, <clears throat> he came to me and he's like, hey, man, where's your cousin at? You know what I'm saying? And I was like, hey, dog, I don't know, bro. But, you know, he was right upstairs. But you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to throw my family member out in the ditch. You know what I'm saying? And he was like, hey, you know, uh, Olivia told me that, uh, that, you know, David was trying to get at her, this and that. But she wasn't telling him the whole story. She was just, she was playing it out as if David, you know, was just, you know, trying to get at her, constantly harassing her. But she didn't tell her that, she was going out with David and that she was also going out with another guy at the time. You know what I'm saying? So she was kind of playing the, the, uh, the innocent part, but continue with your story. Just so no backstory to how I know this individual. Thank you. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Yeah. That was very important. So my cousin basically, uh, saved my, my life at this time. Now here's the thing. Um, I worked at GameStop at the time and the, my brother-in-law actually worked in the same block. So I remember one time he actually came by my, my job and I thought this was the part where it had to go down and I was waiting. I was prepared. I was outside, brother. I was outside. Nothing happened. <laughs> so when I saw that, I felt like at that point I, I said, all right, this guy is, he's not really a fighter. He just talks because I was ready, bro. Like, honestly, man, I had nothing to lose, man. I had no place to live. I literally just, I was like, I have nothing to lose. Honestly, I, I don't give a damn. I mean, here's my thing. Let me let me um protect my uh civil rights right here. So for me, for those who don't know, Olivia or my brother-in-law was a very abusive man. And I'll tell you why. Every time they fought, she made Olivia sleep in the bathtub as a punishment. The reason why I know that because she sent me pictures and she called me that same night when she when he did that to her. And I was like, damn, girl, he treats you like a little hamster. And she's like, I, I just I did everything right. I cooked for him and I, I did his laundry and he still put me in the tub. I'm like, girl, how many days have you slept in the tub? She's like, four days. Oh, shit. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. And I said, how was he supposed to take a shit? She's like, he never came in the bathroom. I was like, what the fuck? So when I heard that, man, I, I lost respect for him. Like, when a guy disrespects a woman like that, that's where I have no shame of what I did. And I'm going to be honest with you, I was ready for any time. And I told my cousin, if it has to go down, it has to go down. But he never did nothing. And I, I was waiting for him to make the first move, you know. Mm. So later on, I talked to my cousin Daniel. And I told him a little bit about the situation, right? We're, we're back again. We're, we're linking up. We're getting back closer, right? And I kept bashing you like, bro, you don't, you don't do that, bro. Especially to like your boy's guy. He's like, man, I don't give a fuck. Fuck that dude. You know what I'm saying? And... I don't know, man. You know, I just wanted to keep the peace uh, in all honesty, but continue, bro. <laughs> so check this out, guys. I am very, um, very persuasive in a way. So I talked to my cousin. At the time, my cousin wasn't talking to my brother-in-law, and they used to be really, really tight. For this was about reason. a year afterwards. After this whole event with you happened, this was about a year afterwards. Okay, so you weren't talking to him. You were free. And I said, this is my perfect moment to shine. So I said, yo, cuz, you remember Olivia? And he's like, yeah, she's bad. Well, brother, by the way, she's single. And um, I feel like you guys could be a perfect match. Next, you know, my <clears throat> cousin's like, no, nah, I, I can't, bro. That's my guy, you know. I said, brother, are you talking? Are you still talking with uh, my brother-in-law? He's like, no, nah, not anymore. Are you guys still friends? I mean, he's my boy. What are you guys talking every day? Nah. All okay. right. So let, let me give my side of this. Okay. Story, tell, tell, I want to hear it. I want to hear it. <clears throat> so about a year afterwards that this whole thing happened with David and Olivia and his brother-in-law, I, um, I completely cut ties with a, with a lot of people. You know, I, I closed my circle down. And at this point, I was basically just hanging out with David every weekend. You know, we, we went out clubbing. 
I would sleep over at his house, you know what I'm saying? So me and David had gotten very close and uh, I had cut all ties with, like I said, a, a vast majority of my friend group at the time. And, you know, um, on, I was on Instagram and I had, I happened to stumble upon uh, her Instagram, you know what I'm saying? And um, I noticed that she, you know, like she was looking cute. And, you know, the uh, the conscious part of me was like, you know what I'm saying? That scumbag is, you know what I mean? So I was like 20, 21 at the time. I had, this was like what, when I was like partying. And, um, you know, the smart part of me was like, dude, don't, don't send her requests. Don't talk to her. Just, you know, acknowledge that she's pretty and move on. But the fucking 21-year-old in me was like, man, fuck that. I was going, I, I had just ended a relationship. I was in a very, like, bad headspace. So I was like, fuck it. You know what I'm saying? Let me, let me do what I got to do. So I ended up messaging her, right? And, you know, we, uh, she started messaging me back. You know, I, uh, I would compliment her. And, you know, we would just have small conversations. And, um... You know, I wasn't sure where things were going. So I uh, after I had slept over David's house one day, I, I met I mentioned it to her, hey bro, you know, remember remember Olivia? He's like, Yeah. I'm like, dude, I've been talking to her. And he's like, No way, you know what I'm saying? And then he's like, What's going on? And I was just I was just telling him, you know, what, what we had talked about, how I was in a way flirting with her, but not not aggressively, you know what I'm saying? Just complimenting her here and there and how she was down to hang out some time. So the point was that, you know, at this point, I was already in deep. I was, uh, there was no way back. There was no way of saving it. And to my knowledge, she was still on and off with the brother-in-law. You know, she was single one week. And then the next week she was still like dating him again. And then they would fight. You know, it was a very toxic relationship. So Olivia and David's brother-in-law end up getting back together and she blocks me, you know, she, uh, she blocks me completely. And I'm just like, Oh shit. You know, I, I think she got back with, with her man, you know? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm, I'm not going to lie. David did, you know, kind of persuade me to, to message her in the first place. And I allowed myself, you know, to, to be persuaded. Why? Because I wasn't hanging around with this individual, you know, and I, I had cut ties with him for about nine months at the time. So I was just like, you know, uh, he, he used to be a, a friend of mine, but he's no longer a friend of mine. And I was young and stupid. And quite honestly, you know, that was, that was, uh, I would consider it a mistake as you know, that I've made, but you know, you live and you learn, but yeah, it, there was a period where I tried getting at Olivia and it, it just didn't end well because at, at the end of the day, I didn't, I didn't get the girl and I ruined a, a friendship, you know, that wasn't tainted, but it had gotten tainted because of what I had done. You know what I mean? And, you know, um, this is where we come back to that topic of, do I agree with you on whether you should date your bro's exes? And if you would have asked me maybe three years ago, would you date your bro's ex? I would be like, if I'm not cool with him, then, you know, fuck him, right? Yeah. But, you know, I, I've gotten a bit older. I've, I've matured a bit. And I, I made a decision to never, ever date, uh, an ex of my friends, you know what I'm saying? And he wasn't, he wasn't even a family member or, or a close friend. He was just someone I, I, I would hang out with occasionally. But, you know, I, I, that experience to me was kind of like an eye opener. And, it, you know, it, it showed me that things don't, don't end well and it's, it's not good to burn bridges. But, you know, uh, on the other hand, there's guys who, you know, just don't give a fuck, you know, and, uh, I, I used to be one of those guys and, you know, it had to bite me in the ass before I could learn my lesson on, you know, on, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I feel you, brother. 
Uh, I was gonna say, man, like when you were saying how y'all used to be friends, I was I just saw that popped up in my head. He said he's just a friend. You know what I'm saying? I just I just thought Dude, about it. Like, <clears throat> like I look back at it now and uh me and this guy had so much in common. You know what I'm saying? We were basically like twins. Honestly. You know, same body build, same personalities, you know what I'm saying? Um Maybe I wasn't a dick or as aggressive as he was when it came towards women. But, you know, we were very similar. And, you know, I, I could have seen me and him have a, having a long friendship down the line. But, like I said, you know, all bridges are burned when Olivia got that message from me, bro. Oh, shit. Well, well, let me just say this for my fans out there. So, one day I actually went out for my best friend's birthday, Victor. We went at the mine. And uh, all of us were there, and we're having a good time. And you're not going to believe who I bump into. It was my brother-in-law. And I was like, oh, shit, it's about to go down, bro. And I just got in. I was like, man, I'm about to have a good time, you know, this and that. And understand this, guys. My friends, uh, Victor, he's like 6'2". My other friend, uh Rodolfo, who is also tall, I think he's six foot two. He's also friends with my, my brother-in-law. So they were all giving me like high five and, you know, saying, what's up, what's up? Yo, that's my boy, David. When we see my brother-in-law, everybody kind of stayed back a little bit. They're like, oh, shit, about to go down because everybody knew my situation. <laughs> everybody stepped back. He literally came up to me and said, What's up, brother? I miss you. And he gave me a, a fist pump like that. I was like, bro, is this real? You not gonna believe what he said after that. Where's Daniel? <laughs> <laughs> bro, Dude, this fool, this man. Like, he looked for Daniel. He went all around the mine and couldn't find Daniel. He did not dance with one girl that night. <laughs> He was looking for Daniel, and I was the like, whole time. And this was one of those rare occasions. I don't know what I had going on. Maybe I had I had work the next day, but I didn't go with you this day. Yeah, it was you just didn't. you, Vic, and Rodolfo. And yeah. you know, I get the phone call in the morning. He's like, "Bro, you're never gonna believe who, who I saw in the mine." I'm like, "Who?" He's like, "Bro, I saw I saw my brother-in-law," and I was like, "Oh, for real?" He's like, "Yeah, dude." He was being like super friendly, but he asked me where you were at and if you were here. And I was like, nah, he, you know, he wasn't here, you know, and he, he just kept looking for you all night. You know, when I look back at it, I was like, <laughs> fucking David, man. He he was just looking for a scapegoat to switch this blame to, man. What an asshole. <laughs> the force is too strong, my friend. <laughs> my friend. <laughs> yeah, man, I mean, you know, uh, I... I don't, I don't think we would have fought, but I, I just think we would have exchanged words, you know, and, and it would have been very awkward because, you know, we were, we were pretty much evenly matched. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, um, I, I think if, I think we just both knew that it wouldn't end well if, if we both had gotten into an altercation, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, it's just, I just look back at that moment, man, and that, that late experience. And, you know, I, I laugh at it because, you know, I, I never, I never pictured myself like, you know, doing something like that, you know, especially, especially because I was so against it with you. You know what I mean? I kept telling you, bro, you know, you can't date, but I was just, I don't know, man. You know, I, I feel like as, as men, you know, uh, we usually don't uh, don't know how to express ourselves. You know what I mean? Uh, or we're afraid of expressing ourselves. And I feel like me messaging this this girl, this individual, was like a reaction of what I was going through at the time. You know what I'm saying? And I was just looking for an easy access. And like all rationality went out the window, bro. You know what I mean? I was just thinking. I I was thinking with my second brain. You know what I mean, bro? Yeah. <laughs> But you live and you learn, brother. You live and you learn. That's true, man. I, I think too, man, like for us as guys, um, we when you grow up in a home where you don't really express your emotions, it does affect you when it comes down to relationship. Because as a guy, 
we kind of like to solve our own problems by ourselves. We don't like to kind of share and express. That's kind of more like what I see in in the not all women, but most women. I would say like that, like expressing, sharing your thoughts, and no, you know, of course, you know, uh, I feel like uh, you know, uh, growing up Latino, it's it's wonderful. You know what I'm saying? Um, the culture is amazing, especially growing up a Mexican. You know, Mexican Latino, but. I feel that a lot of Mexican males grow up in an environment where machismo is, you know, it's encouraged, you know, as a, as a young man, you're told not to cry, you know, boys don't cry, you know what I'm saying? Things like that. So we learn how to suppress our emotions and, you know, it, down the line, it, it affects us when we're older, you know, because we, we suppress, we hold, and you can only suppress, you know, your emotions so, so long before you just burst. You know what I mean? And I, I feel like with today, you know, um, a lot of people are starting to embrace the idea of, you know, of, like you said, ex being able to express yourself freely without the judgment of others. You know what I mean? Especially whether you're, uh, whether you have different sexual preferences or, you know what I'm saying? You just see life in a different manner. But yeah, man, growing up in a in a household where uh, where you're being told not to not to express yourself emotionally really does affect you, you know. And that story that that we shared, where uh, where we where we made a mistake based on a a bad breakup, that was the, I feel like that was a way of us, you know, trying to get back at the world, you know, and not not knowing how to uh, how to properly deal with the situation, bro. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, you know, brother. Yeah. Uh, it's just it it shouldn't be it shouldn't be uh, looked down upon or for for a man to be able to express himself or tell his woman how he feels. You know, it, sh it should be something where a man feels comfortable to share his his feelings with his, with his partner. You know what I mean? Right. And, and for the women out there, I don't want y'all to think that we don't want to tell you what we feel or what we're dealing with. Sometimes we just need our little space to kind of do our own thing. And then when we feel ready to, we will tell you our problem. But we're not like those that we got to tell you every sec. All right, this is what's going on. Sometimes, I, I mean, this is for me. I don't know if this is for you too, brother. But for me, if I'm going through something and I know that I can't really talk about it with her right now, I got to literally have to step away from everybody. I might even run. I might just hang out with my boys for a bit just so I can stop thinking about that problem. And then when I find a solution for it, then I feel more better. I'm in a better state. And then I can, you know, talk about it. But I, I can't talk about it all the time. What, what about you, brother? How, how do you? You know what? I, I completely agree with you um, on, on it being okay to, uh, to take a step back, you know, and analyze the, situa the situation, isolate yourself from it, you know, because... Um, there's a, there's a saying it's, it's, I rather, you know, express myself at the right time instead of having a four second victory and a lifetime of problems. You know what I'm saying? It's very easy to, uh, to go off on your partner. You know, it's very easy to insult, to insult her or, you know, call her out on her name, but when you do so, you know, that's, that's something she, she won't forget. You know what I mean? And that's what I mean by a four second victory at the time when when you say something back or, you know, you you call her out on her name. It feels good. You know, you feel empowered, but you don't see that you're about to deal with a, a, a very long time of making up for what you did or said. You know what I mean? So, yeah. uh, you know, stepping, taking that step back, analyzing the situation is always good you know especially like i said when you come from a household where you know expressing yourself isn't your forte because you know um we have to learn it as adults so it's it's not like it's not engraved in our brains to react kindly or just to shrug it off you know our first our first instinct is aggression bro you know whether it's verbally or physically and you know, you, you need that step back, bro. I completely 100% agree with you on, on, you know, taking that breather, bro. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Yeah, and and I feel like, too, um, I wish in high school 
because we spent so much time in, you know, elementary and high school, but more in high school, that they should have like a class that teaches how to basically uh, control anger or different ways to deal with anger and what is a toxic relationship. If we had those two classes that was mandatory, that would definitely avoid a lot of messed up relationships that I see today. Mm -hmm. I'll just be honest. Because if you don't have that, and let's say like, your, let's say both of your parents came from a toxic relationship and that's all you saw, that's all you know. You feel me? And you think it's okay. So that, that's kind of like something I feel like the world could change. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, there's still a chance, but. I wouldn't yeah. go to the extent of saying you would have to take a class for it, but I would say, um, you know, just the upbringing of a child, you know, at an early age, you know, you should, you should, you should tell your child it's okay for, for he or she to express themselves freely as long as it's respectfully, you know what I mean? To not be afraid of showing their anger or, or showing their fear or, or sadness, especially for a male, you know what I mean? Um, it's, you know, w women are grow up protected, you know what I mean, bro? You know, mo most women are taught core values and a lot of men, you know, a lot of Hispanic Mexican men <laughs> grow up with the idea that a woman's supposed to do everything for you, you know what I mean? And I feel like that, uh, that idea should uh should disappear you know it's it's a 50 50 it's a relationship it's 50 50 and it, it, it all just starts with the upbringing of a child you know as long as you make your child comfortable in the situation he finds himself in or she finds herself in i feel like it all starts at a very young age you know what i mean yeah i like that i like that. that's deep brother that's deep now for my next thing i want to ask you about how do you feel with the new dating now the, the 20th or 2021 that has changed for all of us when it comes down to dating, but do you feel like it has, uh, like what's your experience on it now? So dating um, this past year and, you know, just in general, like 2020 and 2021, I feel like it made it a lot more personal why? Because, you know, you're not able or you weren't able to go out to locations. You know, you had to really take that one on one time together. And I just feel like dating today, you know, um, it's a lot easier than, than it was. It's a lot easier to meet people, but I feel like it's a lot harder to date someone. Why? Because you have apps like Bumble, Tinder things like that, Instagram, where you can easily message anybody and just say, hey, you know, um, what's up? Or how are you? You look very pretty today. You know, um, whatever it is. But I feel like um, because we also have all these social media outlets, it's very difficult because um, you, might be, you might be talking to somebody one day and someone else might catch your interest the next day. You know what I mean? And... It could be vice versa. You could be talking to a woman, you know, or, or a man, and, you know, you, you could think you guys are having a great conversation. And then the next day they can find someone who, you know, th their interest shifts and they no longer like you. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like dating today is meeting people. It's a lot easier, but dating them, it's a lot harder if, if I'm making any sense. You know, what's your take on it, bro? You know? So for me, it's like, a little, a little different, just a little different. So I've been, because I'm in Vegas and I don't have any friends and family out here, I had to kind of build my own circle, right? Find a new one. And so what I did was I started joining these uh, social dance events, like coming to anytime there's one coming up, I'm going to be there. Why? Because this is my chance to kind of show off my dance skills and meet new people and get there number and so you know what i'm saying and it feels good because i don't have to like you know um i guess like dm them i'm more like in person i feel like i suck i think you know how i am bro I'm, I'm just a little different now dating is a little hard i ain't gonna lie i um i i remember like going out with this one chick she was so bad man i ain't gonna remember she, she's real cute she's a black chick i met her at one of the social dance events and um, we went out for our first date, 
at uh, Rachel's Kitchen, one of the best mac and cheese spots. For those who don't know, they throw down like crazy. We went there, and uh, your boy uh, um, went there early, and I thought I saw her. So I went there, and I said, what's up, girl? She turned around, and it wasn't even her, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh. And I was I felt stupid. And she's like, I said, yo, what's up, girl? And she goes, and I'd say the name, right? She's like, oh, that's not me. I said, like, oh, snap, I messed up. She's like, what are you, who are you waiting for? I said, well, I was waiting for my day and I thought it was you. So that's why I try to surprise you. And she goes, well, here's the thing. If your day don't show up, you can sit with me. That's what she said, man. So I was like, yo, this girl ain't bad looking too. So you know what? I'm going to take my time. So we started talking for a bit and then I went out with this chick, right? And uh, my, my day came through and you know what I'm saying? I had to keep it, keep it smooth and stuff like that. But, like, I do agree with you that the dating has changed because now with the pandemic, you know, you got girls wearing these masks, even guys. Um, people are, like, a little bit more scared because of that COVID and all that crap. But here's the thing. I think a lot of uh, young people are struggling, too, because... It's not, I'm telling you, it's so different. Like, now you can't even eat in the freaking restaurant like before, you know. You know, uh, you, you mentioned something, how you and I are very different when it comes to personalities, you know. Um, you're a very outgoing individual, and I've always said it, you know. You surprise me, you know, just with how the way you are. You you aren't afraid of no's. As a man, most men are, are afraid of no's. You're very confident when it comes to approaching somebody, and me, I'm the complete opposite. You know, I'm very, I'm very timid, shy at the beginning. <clears throat> and I feel like, like you were saying with this whole COVID, you know, um, I feel like something that COVID did was isolate two individuals. Why with this six foot apart rule, you know, you're no, you no longer have another couple sitting next to you or while you're eating dinner, you have them like about a table away. So your focus and her focus is usually, you know, you guys just have each other's attention. And I feel like for a guy who's very shy and timid, you know, it's, it's very hard for him to, uh, to get out that shell, you know, and, and I say from personal experience, sometimes it's, it's difficult for me to, to either sustain a conversation with somebody or feel comfortable enough to, uh, to be able to talk more about myself with them. You know what I'm saying? Cause I feel when it, like when it comes to that, I'm very conservative. Now, don't get me wrong. You know, when you know me, man, I can talk for hours. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm a freaking clown. You know what I mean? I'll give you a great time. But those first couple of dates for me, man, you know, they're always the, the difficult ones. Like, either I really have to have to get myself out of my comfort zone, you know, if I really like this the, the girl, or... You know what I'm saying? Like, it just goes bad. They never message me again. Why? Because I was just quiet the entire time. And, you know, I feel like that's why I, I would say that dating nowadays is hard because I, I put myself, you know, in those shoes. But for an outgoing person like you, it's perfect. Why? Because, you know, you're not, you're not timid. You're not shy. So you can keep a conversation going. You know, you have so many things to talk about and you're not afraid to express yourself when it comes to, to doing so. So I feel like the game switched up, man. The game switched up. No, for real. For real, brother. I, I actually want to share something real quick. So a great movie, speaking of that, how dating has changed. One of the best movies I just finished watching like two weeks ago is called Swingers. It's with Vince Vaughn. And I forgot the other actor. But Vince Vaughn is like about 23 years old. And that okay. movie takes place in Vegas. And he talks about different ways of basically approaching women getting rejected <laughs> and going with the flow pretty much and one thing he says bro that i love what he says he's like when you go on the date he's like you just gotta listen to what they gotta say you know what i'm saying they want to hear all oh, the puppies oh, yeah. But he's like, I'm in that metallic, I don't care like what happens, right? I'm just going to do what I do. And one thing I like that 
uh, if you watch the movie, brother, you, I want to hear the next time we, I have you back, you tell me which of the characters you, because my character is like Vince Vaughn, because Vince Vaughn, this is him. Everywhere he goes to a club, all the bouncers know him. And then, oh, snap. And he's with a girl, right? Yo, what's up, man? What's up, man? Yeah, yeah. I think his, his name is Peter or something. Dude, yo, yo, man. And he said, he's like, hey, are we good? Yeah, yeah. So he never has to pay for cover. <laughs> and that's literally what I do in Vegas. Like, everywhere. Like, I just came, I just went to Blue Martini, like, this week. I, I went in the club. I said, what's up to my boy? He's the head of the security. I said, what's up, brother? Yo, what's up? He said, hey, you trying to you trying to have fun? I'm like, yeah. He said, bro, don't worry. I got you a table. Just come through. I come in. I got these beautiful models walking me to my table. You know, I'm feeling special. I don't pay nothing. And that's kind of like how Vince Vaughn's character is. Like, everywhere he goes, he knows somebody. And he shares stories to these badass chicks. And when he tells the stories... He exaggerated. Like, he, this is what he did one time. He went to, he was talking to the girl, and he said, I'm a producer for Hollywood. Oh, my gosh. And the girl's like, oh, my gosh. Like, what film? Well, let me tell you how I hired these actors. And he tells them, like, what happened? And he's really, he doesn't have a job. <laughs> In the whole movie, he don't have a job. So I actually did his technique before I saw the movie. I went out to Blue Martini, and this was my first or second night going and I see this beautiful chick next to me. And she happens to start a conversation with me. And she asked me, so what do you do? I said, I'm the DJ for Blue Martini. She's like, oh, my gosh, for real? And I'm like, yeah. And she goes, you were amazing last night. Let me buy you a drink. And she literally bought me a drink. And I was the happiest guy on the block. That's the cool part, too. When you go to another state and you don't know anybody, you can create your own story, pretty much. And no one will find the truth because they don't know you. There's not like, you know, somebody will tell somebody, hey, do you remember this? They, they can't because I, I got nobody. You feel me? So that's one thing that Vince Vaughn does that I like in the movie, that he, he everywhere he goes, it's sad. He's technically lying. But he says, after tonight, because the girl's going to get messed up, she's going to turn up with her best friends. She's going to forget everything that happens the next day. And I agree 100%. I never saw that girl again. Jesus. I know she got drunk. I know I got drunk. And it just, you know, that's how kind of can and what happened with life. But, yeah, man, I had to share that. <laughs> um, you know, um, I actually have a question for you, man, if, if it's okay, you know, to ask. Um you know, ever since you moved out to Vegas, you know, I, I've been very curious about Vegas because, you know, I'm almost 24, man, and I've never been. You know what I mean, bro? And I've heard that in Vegas, you know, when people go, like you said, they, they, they play a, a different persona than what they – or they, they, they show people that they live a lifestyle that they don't really live. You know what I mean? And my, my question to you is um, – is it, you know, you, you just told me that you, you sometimes put it at practice, but, you know, how do you feel, you know, like, with with that idea, you know what I mean? Like, if, if I'm making any sense, like, you know, um, would you consider it, you know, just part of part of the Vegas life, or would you kind of consider it the me a means to get your way, you know what I mean? Like, if I'm making yeah, yeah. So here's the thing, man. In Vegas, there's different types of people for sure. Um, I feel like because me as a young kid, um, when I was young, I wanted to be an actor. Every day you're pretty much acting. That's how I see it in Vegas. So me, when I'm saying I'm a DJ, for example, I'm acting. I'm, I'm putting the stage face. But that's not really Yakov, what it do. It's not David. It's DJ David. You know what I'm saying? So, so I do it because people, here's the thing, people gravitate to a good story, to positive energy or whatever you call it. So if you can sell it, this is the way I look at it is if I could sell a story and they're hooked to it, 
I know that I got I got her attention. I know that she, you know she feels interested in me. I know she wants to dance with me. But if I come in like everybody else, and I just drink and I, of and course, just, you know, I'm not really gonna get better results if you think about it. I don't stand out, and you know. And, and here's the thing. And you told me this a long time ago too. Girls are more attracted to you if you tell them that your life is better than theirs. Right, they want excitement in their life. They don't. They don't want someone who's boring and just stays home all day. You know what I mean? They want someone who's who's willing to offer them an adventure. You know, a good time. Right. You know what I? Mean? I get you, bro. I mean, I completely understand you. And just going back to dating, you know what I mean? I feel that, uh, like I said, you know, I get where you're coming from, and. To be quite honestly, uh, like to be quite honest, I feel like, um, you know, the pandemic played a very big, big part, you know, on in either relationships getting very, very close or just ruining them. You know what I mean, bro? So just dating in today's day is ridiculous. You know, you, it's like, like Forrest Gump said, it's like a box of chocolates, man. You never know what you're going to get, brother. It's you know true. I mean? it's it's true. True. Yeah, bro. I feel like I got a little better. Like, it's so weird, man. I feel like I'm attracting, and you, I think you already know this, but I feel like I'm attracting a lot of different kind of girls in one angle. Like, it's sad to say this, but like, you know, I'm meeting so many in the exotic industry, if that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? From, you know, it's sad to say, I mean, it just happens. I, I meet some, but like, like uh, I'm, I meet some escorts, strippers, sugar babies. It's weird that I've been, I guess, exposed to that. Like, Many of them have come to my life. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know if it's a blessing, but they've been coming in my life. And it's just weird. Like, you never know what you attract to your reality. That's the thing. That's that's the crazy part, right? Um, I don't think anyone's prepared for anything, right? You kind of just go with the flow. That's that's pretty much it. Yeah. Say. But... Uh, I don't know how I got into that, but <laughs> no, man, I completely understand you. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, we sometimes just attract a certain group of people, you know what I mean? And, uh, maybe it's not the group of people you'd like, or hell, maybe you find out you love that group of people, you know what I mean, brother? But yeah, man, um, you know, just, I just feel like it's perspective, you know, dating in today's days, it's all a perspective. It's how you're approaching a, a, a relationship. Um, you know, like, like what you just said, you don't know what you're going to get. You know, um, you, a girl, you know, to you might seem like the best woman in, on earth, you know, the first couple of months. And then you move in with her and she's a total slob or vice versa. You know, you move in with a guy. And she finds out, you know, you are not who you say you were. You know what I mean, bro? So, I don't know, man. Just, I just feel like it's broad. Yeah. Uh, you know yeah. what I mean? Why date? Stay single. You know what I mean? I'm with you, man. I honestly, I love being single, bro. I, I, I have no complaint. I think that, and I told you this a while back, I feel like if you appreciate being alone, then... When the time comes, you find somebody who may be the one and you guys get married and let's say she wants a divorce. I will not, I will get hurt, but I will look back in my old life and said, man, I actually was a lot happier being single. Be straight up because I learned how to deal with myself. You feel me? And how to spoil myself and do me. So I already know how much fun I had. Because you honestly, here's the thing what people don't understand. When you're in a relationship, their problems becomes your problems. And it's a lot of stuff you have to withstand, have balance. It's, it's, a, it's a always constant work, if you think about yeah, it. Yeah, 50-50. Yeah. But when you're alone, on the other hand, 
you could come in and say, I don't feel like cleaning for two weeks. And I'm Jeez. just going to do that. I'm going to clean the clock, <laughs> butt naked. I'm going to do whatever I want. I can invite whoever I want. I can talk to whoever I want. You know what I'm saying? So you don't I'm, have to. You don't have to worry about overstepping anyone's boundaries, man. There you go. There you go. I mean, and here's for me. I feel like the next girl I date, I or I want a serious relationship with, I'm not gonna change the way I am. She's gonna have to suck it up, and I, I'll tell you why. <laughs> because. That's how I am. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to change my schedule for this girl. I, of course, I'm going to make some time for her, but she is only part of my happiness. She does not complete me. The moment when she com when I put in my head, she completes me, that's when I fall apart because I start losing myself. And I don't want to lose myself. I want to be David, Yaakov, what it do, and I ain't going to stop. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's how I see it. That's how I see it, brother. <clears throat> no, I completely agree with you, man. Right? 100%, brother. Yes. The moment the girl wants to change you, that's there's a problem because that means she doesn't accept you. <clears throat> you know, man, um, there's there's someone out there for everybody, you know? Um, maybe you run into a few failed relationships, but at the end of the day, with all these millions of people, there's someone out there for everybody. And... You know that person's gonna gonna end up liking you for who you are. You know what I mean? They're gonna accept you for who you are, and a person that wants to spend the rest of their life with you won't ask you to change because they they've accepted you from the beginning. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that that's just that's just kind of how I see it, and um, you know, yeah, brother. Thank you, bro. Well, let me wrap it up, man. Uh, thank you guys for coming to the outlet to reality. To hold this podcast in Vegas and Chicago. What up? Um, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. Chi ching every Tuesday. Check us out. Uh, check my IG, the outlet to reality, and my Snapchat, take one pass it, and my TikTok at Yakov28. And thank you, brother. Um, my cousin Daniel. For yeah, no problem, here. man. Anytime, bro. Anytime. Thank you, brother. Any last words you want to say to the fans out there? No, man, just uh, keep supporting David. You know, um, hopefully, you know, you guys enjoy his content as much as I do. And, you know, just give him a like, subscribe to him. You know, he's he's doing very well. And uh, I wish you nothing but success, brother. Thank you, bro. I appreciate it. And for those who don't know, real quick, if it wasn't for my cousin Daniel who pushed me to do this podcast, I would never actually done it fully. He actually encouraged <laughs> me to talk about the things I'm good at, right? Like religion, um, life, whatever it could be. But he really pushed me to put all these topics into the podcast. Like I literally talked for three hours with my cousin and we brainstorm what could really get young people to watch the podcast. So thank you, brother. I'll never forget that. No, man, uh, anytime, man. To be quite honest, man, this was all you, bro. You know, you're the one that took the leap of faith and started pursuing what you what you really want to do man and i wish you nothing but success brother thank you thank you man all right fans y'all take care peace